pretty straightforward to fly. Basically, you just you arm the system. You click this up arrow, which will turn green if the system's ready to take off. You click that, then you click a takeoff button, and it pops up to three meters in this case. And you just take your altitude slider up, fly out to where you want to get your imagery, hover over your imagery, take some photos. The scout was best described, I heard, by a, by a reporter during one of our operations as a flying smoke detector. It's about eight inches in diameter disc, it's about three inches thick, and it has four arms that stick out of it with the propellers spinning on the arms, all up on some landing gear. So I'm David Giesel from University of Alaska, and we just finished our scout flight here on the beach. And our map of this island of Seguam is clouded over, so we had to fly by the camera. So we set up these little points of interest along the shoreline to give us kind of a point of reference. You ready? Yep. To fly the scout, you really don't need to see it. In fact, the operator on that tablet usually is operating with his head down. Someone else is keeping an eye on the plane or the area around the plane just for safety to make sure we know where it's at and what else may be out there. But the aircraft itself, technically, you could fly it out and, and you could sit in a room and never see it. You could bring it back and land it. You'll never have to look at it. So this whole interface is pretty simple. On, on this half of the screen, you have your map. And uh, you can pan the map around. You can zoom in and zoom out. Um, this is where you control your flyer also. This is your altitude slider. You can take the altitude up and down. And to pull the slider in any direction, you just click on the screen and it will fly to wherever the stylus is pointing. The HD video camera that we tested in the Aleutians, that actually was the first time that payload had flown for any operations. In fact, we got the prototype, the number one prototype from the manufacturer as they were trying to develop this as a new product. And so we gave it a good first crack test. And you can tell from the videos. So the scout fully loaded the battery, the camera, weigh just under two and a half pounds. We just finished our 29th flight. So we've done uh, 29 flights. We have like five and a half hours in the air now about 53 kilometers of distance flown, and something like 60 gigabytes of data collected between the video and the still imagery that we've shot, so quite a bit. We'll fly in conditions that are beyond its flight performance. If it can only fly 31 miles an hour forward, it can fly in winds that are higher than that. It just can't fly forward in winds that are higher than that. The rain, I've never flown it in just a pure downpour. We've regularly flown it in showers that are soaking your clothes. We've flown it in snow, we've flown it in all kinds of conditions like that. Never would fly it in a sleet, you know, essentially freezing rain that would be sticking to stuff. And we've had those opportunities when we're in the Aleutians to fly in those weather conditions, and we wouldn't fly those days. Wait for it, I'm going to bring her down. Landing on to the boat has been the hardest thing to do. The scout will hover in the air in a fixed position, but the boat is rocking underneath and moving. And also the wind currents coming over the boat change a lot. So as the flyer comes over the boat, there's a wind shear and it shifts from steady wind out over the ocean to changing wind over the boat. So it gets a little bit squirrely. Here you are looking up in the sky trying to see the scout. The boat's moving and rocking underneath you. You have no perspective of the, you know, where you're at you know, relative to the, to the boat. You know, you're feeling your way around on the ship deck with your feet, looking in the air. You totally lose perspective, kind of like if you look up in the sky and you're like, what's going on? You, know, you kind of lose where you're walking, which direction you're going. Not a real comforting feeling when the boat's moving around underneath you and there's stuff on the deck, you know, boards and other things that you could trip on. So spinning propellers, if they hit me in the arm or the hand, they, there was a chance they probably could have broke my skin and I could have cut me. I basically wore a, a chainsaw helmet. So I wore you know, essentially a hard hat with a little face visor, so the face shield on the front of the helmet that would give me a chance that if the propellers, for some reason, I only got a hold of it part way, it would come loose, it wouldn't hit me in the face. I think we've uh, polished our technique. We've done 12 ship landings, four of them were a little bit chaotic and, and eight of them were pretty good.
I think some of the ship crew expected us to fly two or three times total yes. during the entire trip. You know, we flew 39 missions. So there were a lot more flying than I think anybody anticipated from the boat. So we never tried to launch a scout when we couldn't launch it, but we did launch the scout a few times where we probably regretted launching it because we launched it and all of a sudden the winds were just, just a lot worse than we expected once we got off the ship deck. And we dealt with it. We actually went and took images. We just cut flight short to come back early to make sure we had plenty of time to get it back. When operating in the Aleutians, 25 knots of wind is not high wind. That's a normal day. <laughs> so the technology exists, and it's useful for many applications beyond its original design, you know, for military missions, for example. Designing the operation and understanding what you expect to get out of it is where I see a lot of room for increasing knowledge. Knowledge about the, the limitations of the technology as well as the benefit of the technology is key. And the only way you're going to get that is by getting out and getting some time on it. Yeah, 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 yeah.